I come in, I work my butt off every day. The last couple of years, I've just been looking for an opportunity to go out there and play the way that I normally play. And everything happened for a reason, that's how I feel. It's kind of frustrating knowing that I'm going to miss a long period of time um, without playing the game that I love playing. What does it mean to you, Derek? Man, everything, man. I work my ass off, bro. Like, it's like... Where once it seemed like Derek Rose's career was over, as the injuries had taken too much of a toll. On this night, even if it was for a brief moment, we retreated to the kind of vintage performance that reminded us all of how great he can be. Rose has struggled with his outside shot for his entire career, and it's no surprise, as the shot clock wound down, that they leave him open. But the way he stepped into this shot was a precursor of things to come. He scored from everywhere on the floor, and watch how he convinces Gobert that he's going to shoot a reverse, only to quick release the layup on the left side of the board. Even with the stifle tower protecting the rim, Rose was undeterred, forcing him to retreat until he could drift to the left just enough to uncork this lefty on the way down off the glass shot. In order to get to 50, you need something special to happen, and with Rose going 4 for 7 from behind the arc, this was a big sign that he was feeling it. You also need some crazy shot making, and when Rose rejects the ball screen for an extended 1-2 that sees him careening off of Rubio, twisting and falling out of bounds, he still somehow gets the ball to roll around the rim and through. He did most of his damage in the second half, as he uses the good screen set by Towns to exploit favors sinking too low, giving him an open 15-footer off the hop. With Rudy lurking on the weak side, Favors isn't that concerned with the penetration, but look at the explosion that makes Favors look like a statue. Rose drifts back to the right side and lays it up and around the block attempt. As the Jazz elect a double team cat down low, the Wolves release some pressure by passing to the high post, and this gets the defense focusing only on Gibson. Again, the Jazz aren't worried about him making the three-pointer, so they help off of him and dare him to shoot. Rose tortured Rudy all night, and here he gets just barely into the lane before jumping off one foot and floating the ball up and over Gobert. On the mismatch, you can tell Rose was feeling it since he didn't even try to blow by Favors, instead using the left-right 1-2 from 20 feet to bury it in Favors' face. We had ball-dominant Rose again, as he brings it up and never passes it, probing for an opening. Check how he comes out of that screen going to his left then hops into a jump shot. And making this shot tells you how everything was in rhythm and going through the net. The game was close and Rose started sensing now was the time to start carrying the team on his shoulders. As the clock wound down, he isolated on the right side and went to the Harden step back, only the two point version, and Rose promptly buries it. At this point in Rose's career, he has to rely on basketball IQ and skill versus sheer athleticism, and the type of work he puts in daily to be able to execute these moves is the exact type of training you get at Point Guard College. They have camps all around the country that allow you to unlock all the potential that's inside of you, just waiting to come out. It's the only training experience that focuses on playmaking, thinking the game, leadership, and mindset training that is simply transformational. And that's what Derrick Rose was last night, displaying his ability to change speed and direction, causing Gobert to have a very hard time keeping up. On the release, it goes just beyond the outstretched arm of the defense and drops through the rim. On the high screen and roll, Rose patiently waits for an opening as Exum runs around the screen, Favors is too worried about Towns shooting and doesn't drop, and watch how Rose goes off his right foot on the one, instead of a traditional right-left one-two, and it allows him to shield the ball with his body, absorb enough energy to control the ball high off the backboard, and a big bucket extending their lead. Midway through the fourth and the game is completely turned, with the Wolves down six. 
The offense doesn't get them anything, so it's creativity time. The gallop to the left allows him to plant the left foot without any muscle slack, exploding into the crossover right by his man. But Royce O'Neal can jump and times this perfectly. In shades of old Derrick Rose, he elevates, drifts toward the baseline, and hooks the soft runner off the glass. At this point, the entire Jazz defense is geared to stop him. Rubio does a good job getting around the ball screen, and Royce O'Neal hovers at the elbow to make sure, as does Favors. The screen comes again, and those same three form a wall, which works temporarily, but forces the switch. Another gallop dribble allows Rose to load with his right foot forward, right by the slower favors, but in this scenario, the big man has an advantage. He knows where Rose is going and should be able to time the block. But Rose gets up in the air, double pumps to allow him to drift farther away, but still has strength to get the ball on the rim over and behind favors' arm. Incredible! Down three and desperately in need of a bucket with a short shot clock. It's clear the spirit of MVP Rose has taken over as he probes with the dribble briefly before lifting both feet, landing with one sound, and just letting fly over the perfect defense of Exum. The ball drops through, and we have a tie game. Down one, they run a double ball screen out of horns, well contained by Gobert forcing it back out to the perimeter. They run the double ball screen again, and what normally isn't an issue for the Jazz is Gobert containing a guard at the rim. But Rose hits him with the Rondo, or the Dream, and makes Rudy look foolish as he lays it in. And for the game winner, a simple ball screen out top has Exum go underneath the screen, which lets Rose get to top speed to the hoop. This is good defense to contain him under the backboard, but this was Rose's night as he simply turns over his left shoulder and tosses in a half hook over the very long arms of Exum. The game ended with free throws to put him up by three and get him to the magic number of 50. And the crowd almost elevated the building as they basked Rose in the adulation of a player who everyone knows has gone through the toughest setbacks anybody could ever endure in their career. Add to that the Jimmy Butler drama, and getting a gritty win like this was exactly what the Timberwolves needed. And after all the ups and downs of Rose's career, the triumphant displays of sheer athletic talent, the heroic outbursts of incredible plays, and the deaths of debilitating damage to his body and his soul, this career high and game winning basket was something Derrick Rose needed more than anything else. I played my heart out. My teammates told me before the game, just play my game. And tonight was a hell of a, a, hell of a night. Sports fans, make sure to hit the subscribe button and adjust your settings so you can get notified immediately when we drop another great NBA video. Let us know how you feel with a thumbs up and a comment. After all, at B-Ball Breakdown, we're not a channel, we're a conversation. You win.